All right, we are live. I'm going to go to the monitor the, the chat here. So just a second to do that, and then we will get started. Okay, and we've got the chat is live. Um, Torsten, if you open it in another window or something um, and then mute it, you'll be able to watch it also. Oh, okay. Uh, just go to my website yeah. and you'll be able to yeah uh, let me Let me know when you've got it, and then we will be... Yeah, I'm, I'm up on it. All right, cool. So I'd set it to uh, live chat instead of top chat. That way we don't miss anything. Gotcha. And then I think we're ready to go. All right, so uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, there's been some interesting news that's come out in the last day about a pretty major player in the budget guitar industry that just kind of went dark all of a sudden. Um, and it got me thinking about the budget guitar industry. And I happen to have a good friend in the industry. Uh, the owner, president of Tease Guitars is with us today, Torsten Jacob. And I want to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to talk about uh, what the budget guitar market looks like, how to survive in the industry. And we're going to talk about, you know, is it collapsing? Is the market collapsing? Is it is it safe to enter that market right now? How do you stay alive? Uh, how do you stay motivated? So uh, welcome, Torsten. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, man. I'm uh, I'm Torsten. I'm the I'm the president and, uh, and CEO of Tease Guitars. We're we're a small little uh, mom and pop shop for the moment. You know, we started off in, in 2021. We got our LLC and started this company up and. Uh, and that was about two years ago. I, I went into it about a year earlier than 2021, and I didn't get really rolling until uh, until 2023 is when we got our first shipment of guitars in. We've had about four shipments uh, dropped since then. It's uh, I've learned a lot about this industry. It's a big industry. 89% um, of the industry is already taken by by uh, Gibson, Fender, Ibanez, uh, Yamaha, Epiphone. And then all the other big names that go along with that, you know, it, it, and a lot of those are budget guitar companies like like Ert and Firefly and things like that. So, 89% um, just by those 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 first five. So what does that leave for the budget guitar market, right? I'm gonna say less than a percent or right around a percent. Oh that's yeah. That's about what that's about what's left. And and if you do the math on that, right? Let's say that the and, and the, the industry. I'm doing this. Um, just to keep it simple, the industry's doing. Let's say they're doing a billion dollars a year. They're they're doing more than that, but let's just say a billion. So if uh, if a person like me can capture one tenth of a percent of that, which roughly it, it equates to about five thousand units per year, um, about thirteen units per day, I think that's that's manageable. As far as a, a customer service standpoint. Once you get up to 40, 50, 60 units a day, um, it, it's a whole different type of business. Oh, yeah. And so it, that that's kind of where we're at. Um, I want to top out at no more than, it, literally, I want to top out at about 20 units a day. They say that the market's grown at about 3% between 2022 and 2026. So it'll it, it's a continually growing market. But yeah. <laughs> the number of units is getting bigger because the dollar, the capital, is dropping, right? Of course. Because these these guitars that you used to used to spend seven, eight hundred dollars for, you're now able to go to a company like myself and, and several others, and get um, and get the same quality of guitar with, believe it or not, better customer service, better quality control. For about twenty five percent of of what you'd be paying for those guitars, um, not more than two, three years ago. Of course, it, it's crazy to me, especially. Uh... When you consider what makes a budget guitar a budget guitar, there, there's a lot of different, you know, definitions of what that is. Some people might be Gibson or Fender purists, and that's all they want to play. So to them, a budget guitar is going to be like $500 or less. But then there are other people where 
Maybe they don't have as much disposable income. Maybe they can afford one single guitar, and to them, a budget guitar is under $200. And, I mean, I know it's probably much more so for you than it is for me, but I remember when you bought a guitar for less than $200, it, it was probably not going to function at all. Uh, and then if it did function, it was probably going to be a piece of crap. It wasn't going to be very reliable. It wasn't going to be anything that would inspire you to play. And the big brands are still behaving that way the ones that you mentioned at the beginning of the show. Those guys are still making the guitars that make kids want to quit. I've got students that I teach every week, and the very first thing in the very first lesson, I ask them, show me your guitar. Because I'm fully expecting that I'm going to need to set that guitar up for them. Because there's no way to demotivate a kid from learning uh, than to give them a guitar that cuts them when they play it, or the action is super high, or the truss rod is, is all messed up so the lower frets are buzzing and choking out. And I find that those brands that you mentioned that are making those those budget guitars, they're terrible. Um, and they still make them that way. But now, we live in a different world today than we did you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, where you can spend less than $200 and get something pretty remarkable. There's a lot of players out there that have been playing this game for a long time. And one of them uh, is what prompted this. Um, I think I can go ahead and name them if you think that's safe to do. They, they, I don't think they exist anymore, really. They're not going to come after us. Uh, really? hard, hard Luck Kings. You guys might be familiar with that brand. Yesterday, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, their Facebook profile picture and banner picture turned into just a black square. Their website went down, and their phone number is now disconnected. They left a lot of people that made orders high and dry without fulfilling their orders, and without any way to contact them to get their money back. So it's interesting to see that. They didn't have a great reputation, and toward the end, people had a lot of bad things to say about that brand. They were kind of directionless. They, they were marketing to older people and millennials at the same time without a different strategy for each market. It was very interesting, um, and I almost wonder if there was something shady going on there. But that's one player that had been in the market since, uh, what was it, 10, 15 years almost that they've been mm -hmm. in the game, mm -hmm. and then they just folded up shop. So, you know, what do you think were the factors that might have been at play in the budget guitar market that led to that, and do you think that we're going to see that with future brands? And how do you protect yourself from meeting a similar fate? Well, okay, so they started, their, their company was, I believe, uh, founded in 2010. Um, they came out with, they came out strong with some really good-looking guitars, and they were after the, uh, the, the the millennial crowd, the younger people, you know, they made they made shiny guitars, man. They made some explorers and some V's and things like mm -hmm. that, and and uh, really sharp looking guitars. And they they kind of branded it um, their own way, which was which was great. Yeah, and, I and have here one. we have <laughs> most people do that have been around for a minute, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and 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 the, the service was good and everything like that. But as, if you noticed that as they went on. Um, they had setups, and, and the setup started out at forty dollars. They ended up at seventy dollars, and then you, you would wait six to eight weeks. I I just started watching what this company was doing in the last two years. I watched all of the, all of my competitors. I watch and what they're doing online, and I noticed that that particular company started taking pre-orders with forty-five day lead times in order yeah. to deliver the car, and then another four to six weeks for the setup. Yeah. So. That scared me. Yeah, that that is shady to me. That that to it, me sounds like drop shipping. Well, I I don't know if it was drop shipping or not, but I can tell you this: that that uh, that you have to pay for these guitars up front when you buy them in China. You just that's just the deal. And, and yeah. I don't care who you are. There's there's no they don't do the credit deal. Right. It doesn't matter how strong your credit is. Doesn't matter how strong your company is. Um, so you're going to pay for those guitars. Of course. And, if you start drop shipping, that just means that you don't have the money to pay for your guitars. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> That's what it sounds and, like it might have happened there. I mean, it sounds like they decided to just take the bag and go home. Well, their guitars were not really that expensive, and they, mm -hmm. and they did have – they had. I, 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 can't, I can't speak for the quality of the guitars at the end. Um, but I know they were putting some money into those units. And yeah. when you're a budget guitar a, a company and you're working with minimum minimum margins, you really are. 
Um, something as simple as too many returns in a month can kill you. Oh yeah, of course. Can just it, and and so what that does is that stops and slows down your cash flow. So if can you have can you have three bad months out of a year? Yes, you can. Can you have three bad months out of a year in a row? That that that's hard to weather. That, that's hard to weather unless you've got deep pockets or or, or strong financial backing. Um, most of the companies, like that particular company, that was started by a guy just like me. You know, yeah. I don't have I don't have a lot of poker chips in this game. I was asked when I came out with some new product of uh, people thought there were there was a fear, a panic because I advertised these SS1 guitars, and people said why don't why don't you pre-sell them? Why don't you pre-sell them? You know, we'll buy them right now. And I was like, bro, let me tell you something, man. The first shipment I got, <laughs> the first shipment I got from China, one of the pallets crushed nine cases of guitars mm. that was 50 54 guitars mm. it those could have been the ss ones right so yeah we got the ss ones in and and i got those in in uh november we'll say january i got those in in yeah. january and um and i wasn't happy with the bridges those are 300 dollars guitars i had to act i can't sell them for 300 dollars now because i had to end up going to an oem floyd rose bridge on those guitars so now they're 350 so what would have happened had I taken that money from those people? I would have had but one choice, ship their their guitar with a bridge that I wasn't happy with. And that is exactly right? why companies like HLK failed. That is exactly why. they they It's, it's the whole idea about like uh, an auto recall. The engineer discovers a catastrophic issue with a vehicle. It makes more financial sense to release the vehicle anyway that's going to kill people because it's cheaper to just pay the settlement and pay the lawyers and do a voluntary recall after the fact than it is to fix it now. And that's what exactly. these companies are getting away with doing. Or not anymore, maybe. They're, they're shipping this stuff anyway, even though they're not good. I mean, you and I have a very good working relationship, and you know, often you'll send me something that isn't quite ready for prime time yet, and you are, you know, you want me to tell you what I find it with it, you know, and, and you, you fix it, and you won't sell that guitar to somebody. You, mm -hmm. you would never sell a guitar to somebody that isn't ready to go out of the box. It's not something that you would do, and mm -hmm. you know that's a, that's a big difference w between you and a lot of these other people. And you know, just so it, it, this is clear for everybody here, um, me and Torsten are friends. This is not—he's not paying me to do this. This is not an advertisement uh, at all. This is literally—we're talking about the market, and he happens to know a lot about the market. And uh, I wasn't compensated for this opinion, but I think these guitars are really good. I've actually got one right here. Um, this is the uh, ST2. This is a Strat style, Torsten. I don't know if you can see it, it uh, because the the camera situation, but they can. Um, you know, I, I we we kind of discussed what we were going to talk about today, but I want to go off script for a minute and just ask you, how did you make this happen? Because this guitar, t tell me what the the MSRP is for this guitar, and then we'll go into the specs. Well, it lists um, the, the direct competitor for that is is the uh, is is the Fender guitar that lists for 249 uh, without getting into the model. I didn't copy their model. Yeah. So they sell that guitar that lists for 249 for 199 and I sell that guitar for 169 The difference between my guitar and that, that Fender guitar is, is I have El Nico pickups in that guitar, and it's $35 cheaper. Mine has a bone nut. Theirs has a... Mm -hmm. uh, theirs, and I shouldn't say... I, I shouldn't say... Uh, Fender, I should say Squire. Right, That's what right. I should say. Yeah, yeah. They have, yeah, they have a 21 fret neck. I have a 22 fret neck. They have ceramic pickups. I have the, uh, I have the Aldeco fives in there. And and you know, I came out with the ceramic. I started this company and launched this company on the ST1 guitar, which is still our our number one selling guitar, believe it or not. And we've got units that are a lot nicer, but that ST1 guitar, it had all the nuts and bolts in it right out of the gate. Right. You know? And we touched those guitars and we set them up and, and uh, we blew them out. We, we, we literally were the $99 uh, guitar company that, that I'm going to talk to you and tell you why that's killing this market, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> that's killing this market. Yeah. Because uh, I, was, I was basically breaking even on those, those ST1 guitars. But when I got the ST1 and I said, okay, so how how can i make it better i've got people like jake that i work with and jake's not the only one i've got three other people mm -hmm. that i work with closely that are they're professional musicians this is this is what they do and uh, and i send him these guitars and i say bro make it better tell me how i can make it better 
And, uh, and so I continue to make it better. Um, oh, yeah. We've got a telly, that same thing, make it better. I, I, got a, I got a telly that came out, the SBH. It's a gigable, playable, beautiful guitar. I gigged it the and, day after I got it. And, and that was yeah. a pre-production model, too. That wasn't even like right. the actual one <laughs> that was sold. It's yeah. being sold right now, by the way. Yeah, but and I've got I, so we got those in in November, and I've got four left. They they sold out pretty much for the, the, I mean, right out of the gate because as soon as people got them in their hands, they were just like, first of all, this guitar's set up, and it's set up right, right? Yeah. All all these guitars come to you set up right, um, because we pay for that. I pay for that at the factory. Yeah. And uh, and then we have. <laughs> Then we have I have a taxi driver in China go pick out six out of the lot of, of whatever if we order four or six hundred whatever it is, and he goes in and he takes one of every model and he ships it to me, and so I get those before they even land on the boat because you know from the boat it takes about thirty to thirty to thirty five days to get yep. here. I go through those guitars with a fine tooth comb. If for some reason there's anything wrong with one of the four different models that we sell. Um, I pay the money to have those shipped because if they land in Utah and we ship all of those guitars. If you went downstairs in, in, in my shop right now, you'd see cases and cases of SS1s. There's 120 SS1s down there. Oh, yeah. I've got cases of bridges. I didn't like the guitar. I didn't like the bridge. They shipped to me. We fixed those guitars. They're now for sale. They're going out. So they're checked by me. Well, the ones that are in the warehouse, they're they're not checked by me. But remember, I've already looked at that that sample unit. That was going on. Um, and I also order stock because I ship for local companies. We, we sell a lot to uh, to music schools and classes yeah. here in, in, in the New York area. So I've got to have stock here. I sell on Facebook Marketplace as well. So I, I get to I get to spot check these guitars. But the people in uh, before your T's guitar ships to you, it's taken out of the box. Every guitar I have is an open box guitar because the frets are filed and mm -hmm. sanded. Before they get to you, but as they're doing that, they check the string height, okay? Yep. And if the string height is on, the fret ends are checked. I already know that they're intonated because I pay X amount of dollars per unit to have them intonated. Yeah. And uh, and then they put it back in the box with a little sanding sponge just in case you get sharp frets, you know, during shipping. If it's going through Wisconsin, you're probably going <laughs> to yeah. get sharp frets in winter. Oh yeah. And uh, so they're checked five times before you get them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I don't. That's that's what makes our our company. Um, just not a little bit different, but a hundred percent different from ninety nine percent of the other guitar companies out there. Yeah, and that's you know? that's. I want to interject here. If you want to look at these things while we're talking about them, you can go to teasguitars.com right now, um, and you can see all the different models that we're talking about. Torsten actually made a code for uh, this stream, Jake ten off. So that's Jake one zero off. That's going to give you what is that going to give them torsten is that ten dollars off yeah ten bucks off anything in the store um, everything that we sell in the store is it's all free shipping and it's all free it'll always be free shipping yeah um the price that you see on there is the price that you pay uh, yeah it's it, it, it's it, it's uh, i'm not here to sell guitars i really want to get back into into what's yeah. going on with this so guitar let's, market because let's move it's, on to yeah, yeah. Let's, let's move back into what we were talking about so one of the things that i think is is causing if there is a collapse happening which i think you could argue that there's a collapse happening but it wouldn't lead to the utter destruction of the budget market i just think that the lowest common denominators the, the weakest are going to get thrown out of the market is what's going to happen but i'm noticing a very disturbing trend where companies that are known for making budget guitars that aren't very good i should add all of a sudden have decided that they're going to make guitars up almost seven hundred dollars six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars so like what's going on like is this like a dodge neon srt situation where <laughs> you've got a model that is is the budget bottom of the barrel kind of a model and then they're gonna turbocharge it or are they just polishing a turd like what, what's going on here like what are what what do you think is going to happen what do you what do you think that the people the target market for this is going to do are they going to buy these at all is it going to ruin the company well, what's going to happen well, I, I think that that those companies that are doing that right now are on on they're they're at the end of the rope. That, that's my honest opinion, yeah. and I'll tell you why. Because they stopped doing, and I'll just use one example that I'm sure everybody has seen on on Amazon. If you went on Amazon three four years ago, you got 
a guitar, you got an amp, you got a strap, you got a tuner, you yep. got picks, you got a book, you got a free CD with lessons on it for one hundred twenty nine dollars. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's what you got. And the guitar was absolute garbage. It was Horrible. just junk. The amp, if, if it even turned on when you got it there. It, it was know, like a, a two thing. watt solid state <laughs> amp that sounded exactly. terrible. Yeah. You know, so. So they did that, and and then all of a sudden, COVID hit, right? COVID mm -hmm. hit, and uh, here here's what happens. All these deep pocket people said, "Hey, we can make a budget guitar," and they made budget guitars. And then now the budget guitars are getting so good, yes, right, that those people can't sell their hundred and twenty nine dollar which is now a hundred and sixty nine dollars right no and they they're they're getting they destroyed can't. they're getting completely blown right. out of the water like a couple of notable uh, examples that i want to name right now the west creek revenge mm -hmm. everybody loves that guitar it's got stainless steel frets it's got a set neck that thing is a it's a top seller on amazon right now in the guitar uh market i have to name yours um while you don't have the mass popularity to the general populace right yet in the guitar groups on Facebook, for example, um, if you're in any of those, like one of them is called $300 or less, I think, and then there's one cheap, awesome guitars, and Torsten's in there. People are name dropping his his stuff all the time, so I mean he's he's coming up in there. So when you got people like the West Creek Revenge, you have his, the Kramer Beretta Special, strangely, is one of those as well. That punches above its weight. It's better than the Pacer Classic, which I haven't played one of those that I like. That some would consider a budget guitar. I think it's four hundred dollars. Um, the Beretta Special is five times better than that one. But you're exactly right. When you've got companies that are making these guitars so cheaply and so well, where it, you get it out of the box, it doesn't make you want to quit because it doesn't hurt you. It actually sounds good. Whether you're a beginner or somebody like me who's been playing for over twenty years, you know it it does the job for you and. Mm -hmm. It, it leaves nowhere in the market for the really terrible, the crap uh, guitars made of plywood with crap necks and really bad fret work and frets that are popped out all the way down the neck. And it doesn't just require a setup when you get it. It almost requires a trip to the luthier when you get it. And at that <laughs> point, what's the point? Why would you right. even bother at that point? Right. So. So they're, they're still out there. There's new companies sprouting out there that are selling. You guys know who they are. They're, they're selling guitars for $88, you know. Yep. And the, other than the plastic tuners on them, it, it's a playable guitar. Yeah. You, know, you, ha you have to know how to set it up. Um, that's another thing. Some of the companies that are, that are uh, bigger players in this budget guitar market, um, I, I don't know how they get away with it, but they do get away with it because 90% of the guitars that they send out there you hear, but I'm in these guitar groups all day long. This is all I do. I don't have a job, job. Okay. I, I sit in these rooms all day long and I talk to a bunch of people because my time is my advertising budget for the year, right? That's, that's kind of what I do. Yeah. And, uh, and I always hear people say the same thing. They say, all I had to do was, and that mentality for me, it doesn't exist. I'm an old guy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a baby boomer, you know, and, uh, and when we bought, we had metal matchbox cars, right? <laughs> so we didn't have the little plastic. We, we, we bought things and it lasted and it worked yeah. right out of the box. And so <clears throat> all I had to do was that just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't sit well with me. Although yeah. I will say that because of of just what we're in today as far as different generations and just the time of life that I'm here. I, I've lived through, this is my fifth generation, so I've, I've seen a lot of things happen in life, right? yeah. a lot of things. And um, and, 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 and today's people are, are molded just to accept subpar products. I raise my hand. Yeah. There's some things that I buy on Amazon that it's so cheap, it's so hard to believe, and, and it'll work once or twice and i go into it knowing that uh, maybe it'll last five times you know yeah and so and so i do that but see with with musical instruments for this old boy i i've just got a passion for music you know my father yeah. was a musician i was a musician and 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 i still am and and my, my father passed away but you know it, it, i just gotta tell you man i i've gotta have something that's um it, you shouldn't have to to set, reset a bridge 
no in a guitar you shouldn't have to to put a uh, you know your own to, to tighten up your own input jack there shouldn't be glue seams on your veneer these are just things that that shouldn't happen with yeah. a budget guitar if you're going to sell a budget to sell that guitar for 88 bucks don't sell it for 200 bucks and don't sell right? it like it's complete <laughs> it's it's right. remarkable what we accept now in fact I have to admit, my YouTube channel only exists because of I just had to. That's the reason that I'm here. That's the reason why this is a monetized channel. That's the reason why we have almost 2,000 subscribers is because the collective guitar market has decided I'm going to sell you a Squire or an Epiphone, and it's not going to be ready to go when you get it home. People find my videos because they buy something, and they're like, oh, my God, what the hell? The tremolo won't stay in tune. What do I do? They go search for it. And maybe by some stroke of luck or algorithm, they find my video and they watch it. So, you know, I'm, I'm, it, it benefits me for them to do it this way, but I really wish they wouldn't. There's right. something about opening up a guitar and it just is perfect. Um, and it shouldn't have to be, you know, a, a Gibson. It shouldn't have to be an American Fender. I mean, yeah, I opened the case of my Gibson Les Paul and, and picked it up and played it for the first time. And I couldn't believe it was the surreal feeling to say... I don't need to change the pickups. I don't need to work on the fret ends. I don't need to hammer any frets down. I don't need to work on the truss rod. I don't need to do anything. It's perfect as it is. And then I thought, is it really worth 1200 extra dollars for that convenience? Mm -hmm. You have decided that it's not. You've decided that you can provide that value to people for a modest – some of them, they just come that way. Some of them, you set them up. Mm -hmm. But some of them, it, it costs a little bit more. But it's still a lot cheaper than it would cost a luthier. I think luthier around sure. here is about 150 bucks just to get your guitar set up, mm -hmm. and that's just absolutely nuts. So yeah, and anyway, we do that for like 40 bucks, you know? It's, yeah, it's, and because, that's a, and it, it's not a money maker. I promise you. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's it takes not you more time. I mean, you you almost you know, you're you're making minimum wage at the time that it takes for you to do that. So it's that. Yeah. So anyway, um. Let's move on to the next part of this here. So do you think that this new wave of the old budget companies making these six or seven hundred dollar guitars? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm going to – you're not saying this. I'm saying this. Let me make that clear. So there's a brand Indio, Monoprice Indio. My viewers probably know about them. They've all of a sudden decided – that they're going to release this like premium guitar that costs like $500. And it goes back into what we said a minute ago. But like I would never I would I would personally never buy that. And to me, it devalues the entire brand m more than it already is. You can already buy a guitar from them for like 129 bucks, 119 bucks, and they're not bad. They're 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 not the worst thing in the world. I've looked at them a few times. I've owned a few. They're not bad. I mean, for you can get them cheap sometimes on Amazon they'll have a sale for like 80 bucks. I mean, it's a piece. Of, it's a guitar that works for eighty dollars. Like, jump on it. That was what they were to me in my head. When you have all these different echelons of builders and and brands, they were down here, but they weren't in the toilet. They were just on the lower level. You know, required some TLC. A brand like that coming out and being like, nope, now we're serious. We're gonna make a really expensive guitar now. And you're gonna buy it instead of buying a used Mexican Fender or something that costs the same amount. They're banking on everybody doing that so you had mentioned you think it's because they're running out of ideas and they're running out of of uh, ways to market why do you think their budget cheap guitars aren't enough now to meet their bottom line why do you think they have to go to that next step what's happened um it, it okay so i'll start with this that um you're gonna get the same hundred dollar customer service for your 700 hundred dollar guitar remember that when you buy a guitar from anybody that is okay? true that is All true. Right. It doesn't matter what they're selling it to you for. And it, it unfortunately <laughs> doesn't work the other way, though. You can't go buy a bullet Squire and expect American Fender levels of customer service. I wish it works exactly. that way, but it doesn't. Yeah, but so so <laughs> that, that's one thing that I look for in that. But I think that, that those companies, um, they're at a point right now to where they're almost, like I said, they're driven out of, of that market because um, – <laughs> The, one of the reasons I started this company, this is a perfect little tiny, it, it's a, it's probably a 30 second story. I'll tell you about it. I bought a Telecaster off a Facebook marketplace that was unbranded. It came to my house and, and the, everything in the world was wrong with this guitar. <laughs> yeah. 
it was just there. it was it was horrible you should have made a youtube I, video about how crappy it was and then it, you could be like me it, it, but, but i got <laughs> this guitar and and the first thing that came to my thought was okay so he's getting these things for every he's paying shipping they're coming from california it's shipping i was living in boston massachusetts and they're shipping all the way to boston for 99 dollars. these things got to be cheap and i said someone's got to be able to do it better oh yeah so i decided to to form a, a company that was going to do that better and and i i set that guitar up and it was it was okay it was uh it was Paulina Wood and it, you know the strings didn't it, it looked like a roller coaster the height of the string it was oh. just horrible and um but I got it and 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 so I decided to reach out to uh to different companies that manufacture guitars in China and Korea and Indonesia and, and all over the place I tried and uh, and I ordered several 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 guitars and and 90% of them came to me just like that guitar <laughs> so th it took me two years to find the companies that I use and the companies that I use that tease guitars uses, I should say, um, are the companies that, that, uh, that my competitors use. Okay. And, sure. and, and, and also some of my non-competitors that are in a whole different level of upper echelon guitars. Um, I get my guitars made with some, some models are made in one factory. The other ones are made in the other. Cause I've learned that some people do yeah. this and some people do that, but if you're just, I can buy these guitars for twenty six dollars. It's crazy. That's how they're able to sell them for ninety nine dollars. Well, because they're ordering, okay. you know, fifteen thousand of them at a time. That's or a thought. However many. No, I can, I can order, I can order a hundred guitars for twenty six dollars. I can do that. I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. Because imagine think, what they would be like when they arrived. It, exactly. Exactly. So um, I think I pay the same amount of, uh, of money, even though I buy a lot less. I think I pay um, just as much money. I don't think that uh, and I'll just say this because it's not detrimental to, you know, to anybody. But, you know, for for Fender, I'm going to have to guess that they pr they probably pay 50, 60 bucks a guitar. I pay 50, 60 bucks a guitar for my bottom, bottom, bottom line guitar, which is not a bottom line guitar. But that same guitar is advertised from other manufacturers and they, they're constantly reaching out to well, me to and have artists you there. do stuff to them you do stuff oh, to absolutely. them that makes yeah. them different so for example um this one has some things that are different from so this isn't a situation where you just go to the factory and you say hey hey china factory i want to order 300 strat style guitars uh in this color thanks that's not how it works no, um I know that you've got – you've already mentioned before. You've got the Alnico single coils in here. And then these have well, – what are the pots and the and there's and the cap and the resistor and all that? You, you yeah, were talking about are, that to me before. Right. Well, in that particular guitar right there, mm -hmm. those are those are just – they're 250. Uh, they're 250 pots. They're yeah. uh, 20, 22 caps. Um, yeah. That's but awesome. They're, they're, but they're not <laughs> – they're not what my manufacturer put in there. They're what I told my manufacturer to yes. put in there. Yes, big difference so too. And I'm somebody huge. who cannot stand those bullet, the bullet line and the sonic line. Um, the Mustang is okay. I have a soft spot for that one. But the other ones, the pots are, are always scratchy and they wear out and the switches are really bad. And even the jacks are not good in those. Um, so, you know, it's notable. You're not doing the, the quantity that they're doing. And that's part right. of what I think is leading to this bad uh, quality overall is that they're pushing so many units that there's no way for them to make sure that the quality is there. There's no way for them to make sure that the instrument is up to snuff. And they don't want to make it too good because they want you to come back and they want you to buy the next model up. Eventually, they want to work you all the way to like an R9 or something if you're Gibson. Or they want to work you up to an American Ultra if you're Fender. I, it, it, okay, so you've you've been inside of that that Telecaster I sold that first one I sold you. Yep, it's, or gave, it's just you, off camera. Excuse me, just off right, camera over here. That. And you opened it up and you went under the hood. Mm -hmm. And and if you were to take that, and if it, it doesn't, it's not like um, they're not not nothing I sell is a knockoff of anything. No. If it if it says CTS on there, it's CTS. If it if it if I tell you it's an Alnico pickup, it's an Alnico Magnum yep. pickup. It's not a a kind of one it's it just it is it, it is one yeah um i will tell you this that uh i've seen a lot of reviews i read one today i was i mean on youtube today to where 90 percent of what people advertise from china is not what the specs of the guitar that they're advertising is they never are 
Uh, it doesn't nope. matter what it is, and I'll, I'm Can't not gonna say they never are. Yeah, because mine are. Okay. Yours are. Yours are. <laughs> I will say I, I've had it's happened a lot. I'll buy them on yeah. Amazon. It'll say it yeah. has a 12 inch radius, but it's actually yeah. like nine. Exactly. Or it'll say it has locking tuners, and it doesn't. Right. Yeah, just you know things like that, and and if and there's never any feedback. This particular reviewer said none of the companies, none of the factories has ever called back and followed up and said, "Hey, we fixed that." Yeah, um, and, and that that's an issue. That's the big issue. the big boys do it too. Right. I got I, 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 listen. Here's the one thing I've learned in life that I, I'm really not concerned what other people do. I yeah. you know I saw that company go out of business. I actually had a feeling when I saw them start to to pre-sell guitars with those lead times. That they were out of money, that they had that three bad months in a row. I I can have three bad months in a row. I'm I'm good. I, it doesn't bother me at all to have three bad months in a row. Yeah. Um, but when you start with nothing, it's kind of hard to have a bad month, man. You know. <laughs> it, yeah. It's kind of hard, but yeah. Today, yeah. It's so it's but um, going up with you know when we talk about companies going up in 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 quality of guitars, that's one thing. But just to price a guitar higher doesn't make it a better guitar, right? Right. It doesn't that make it true. any better. So, you know, if if I if I put uh, we talked about this last night, I believe, you know, I put stainless steel frets on my guitars now, not because I like stainless steel frets, because the market is demanding that guitars have stainless steel frets. Yep. Um, It'll be so, like brass nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so It'll go you guys, away. when you guys start polishing your stainless steel frets, don't get pissed off at me about it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like the I like the nickel metal frets, man. They're easy to make them real shiny, you yeah. know. They're, they're it's it's cheap, it's fast. You know, you're you're going to be looking at an hour and a half to polish your frets. I can probably polish the frets on a regular guitar with regular frets on it, probably in about 15, 20 minutes. So that's, oh yeah, that's, that's the difference. That know? is a big difference. So, but when, so when we were talking about it and, and, uh, and I told you what I pay, but here's the deal with that. I, I'm not going to, I'm not, my price isn't going to go up. I could go up. Mm -hmm. It could, I can justify it going up. Oh, you, sure, you certainly could, especially with what, what is the cheapest guitar you can buy right now with stainless? It's probably the West Creek, one of the West mm -hmm. Creeks. And I think it's like, I don't remember how much they are. They, they've mm -hmm. gone up by the way, since I did Firefly. my video. Firefly. Firefly has it. Firefly does it too. Yeah. yeah. Firefly has all ball end rounded steel, uh, stainless steel frets on their guitars. And Firefly's got a, they've got a very loyal following. Do you think but it's a fad, stainless steel I, frets? I, 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 it's a posh word right now. Like I said, when people start, they, they most of these people get toolkits. Mm hmm. And you, they got YouTube and a toolkit. You don't know how many, how many guitars I repair from people who I gave a free cool toolkit to, right? They just, <laughs> they don't know. So, so I will not it, make a video. I'm not making a video about how to polish stainless steel frets. I'd rather refret a guitar than have to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot it of is. work, you know. So um, you know, there, there's things that that we do a little different than other companies don't do. You know, we we I mean, I have a Zoom feature. I have a Zoom feature, and I've got I've got not not guitar techs. I've got luthiers that that have went to school and been doing it for at least 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and 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 then I've got you know I, I know people that that they can work on a guitar in their sleep and they're just as good as those guys because they've been working on guitars for 15 years. But if you've got an issue with the T's guitar, man, it comes out of the box and UPS just threw it in the back. And believe me, they're horrible. And and they knocked your intonation out, or maybe you got fret buzz because that that the uh, the neck relief it moved and and yeah. it does just say, or it's freezing, right? Well. All you do is just say, "Hey, man, my guitar ain't working right," and uh, and you send us a call. You give me a call. Give me a me right here. Give me a call, right? Yeah. I'll pick up the phone every time, yeah. and and I'll set up an appointment for you with one of the with one of our technicians, and we'll do a Zoom call, and and we'll walk you through it, fix your guitar for you while yeah. you're right there. Um, that's a that, big that's difference a, between it, yeah. you and everybody else, really. Yeah, I you can't know, name a, a single other one that does that. Yeah. It's important for me to 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 always do the right thing, and and always do the right thing means again. I, I was born in 1964. When when I go to the guitar shop, man, or I went anywhere, I got what I paid for, and the people that sold it to me, they actually gave a crap about what they were selling, mm -hmm. and, and they wanted me to be they wanted me to be happy, and they wanted me to be happy not just today. They wanted me to be happy with that purchase, and and that's something that I could hang on to and and uh, and pass down or keep. And it would still be it would still be a good product. So yeah, of um, course. 
that's kind of our business model is, is do the next right thing. Always yeah. available, you know, to, you what, I mean, how, how late shooter. were we talking about these guitars last night? It was like four o'clock in the morning or something, five o'clock in I the went, morning. I, I went to bed at five o'clock, man. I went to bed yeah. at five o'clock. So, I mean, yeah. we, and we were, it was nothing super important. It was just, we were talking yeah. about how to build a better guitar and how to, yeah. how to, you know, we were QAing one of the ones that was a pre-production and yeah. just talking about different features and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah. I think that's a very, very uh, big degree of separation. I want to get into some of these comments here. Um, again, we're here with uh, Torsten from Tease Guitars. Um, you can check his guitars out at teaseguitars.com. You can use the code Jake10off, Jake10off, $10 off anything in the store. Um, so I want to go to, into some of these comments here, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, all right, so Southern Cross has sent uh, several messages throughout this, and I am sorry, dude. I didn't see them until just now. Um, all right. Main reason for the decline of shops like yours is the online market where people are buying sight unseen, never touching the guitar before the purchase. I think there's definitely some truth to that. Um, they look for the thing that looks the, the flashiest. I mean, Firefly is an example of that. The flashiest, outrageous looking guitar. Now, West Creek's the same way, but they actually back it up with a good guitar. They're an exception to the rule, though. But yes, that is absolutely true. Um... YouTube contributes by allowing almost anyone to do guitar repairs. It certainly does. I think it's driving these really bad guitars out of the market unless they can come down substantially. I mean, if I could buy an electric guitar on Amazon with prime shipping for $60, I'm going to buy it. I'm not even going to ask any questions. I'm buying it. Um, and that's because of all of this, the skills of being able to, to fix a guitar. I know a lot of people would agree with that, and that is contributing to people on the top end of this budget spectrum falling off. That's what happened to HLK. Um, maybe they'll come back and prove me wrong and make me look stupid, but I, I think they're done. They're, they're, there's no coming back from that. Let's see. Uh, Southern Cross Vids wants to know, Torsten, do you sell online or from a physical shop? Uh, we do both, you know. I'm, I'm here in, in, in uh, right outside of the New York City, and uh, and I, I probably sell I don't know, probably 10, 15 guitars a week from folks that come by and try them out first. And uh, if if you pull up and, and <laughs> if you look like you might kill me, I probably I'll probably take you out back and let you play. It. But if you, <laughs> if you, if you look like a you know a halfway decent and I don't get any bad vibes or anything, come on up, man. Let's jam for a minute. You know, put it in your hand. Let's take it for a spin. That yeah. type of deal. So I sell quite a few. Yeah. Yeah, and and it is free shipping, so yeah, it's almost irrelevant unless you're super impatient like me, and then you gotta wait for shipping. But that's right. that's a big big plus with the free shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, Great Planet says, cheap guitars won't keep people playing if the guitars are hard to play or sound bad. Absolutely, mm -hmm. a million thousand percent yes on that. I I teach lessons, I teach about twelve a week, and I can't tell you how many times I've seen a kid with a really horrible horribly set up guitar that has no motivation at all, that I never practice. And so I'll say, why don't you leave your guitar with me this week? Because I know they're not going to practice anyway. And then I set it up at home, and then I take it back to them the next week. And what do you know? Mm -hmm. The ensuing week they've practiced and they care again. So that's right. absolutely true. Um, I don't know why they've got to have all, all these beginner guitars. People say, this is a great guitar for beginners. That phrase really bothers me. It always has. How could you say that to somebody or about a guitar? Oh, yeah, the Les Paul 100 is an example of one. That's a great guitar for beginners. Like, what are you doing? I, like, well, get off your high horse, man. Like, are, are you, what you're really saying is this guitar is not up to my personal standards. I guess it would be okay for the lesser folk who don't really understand how guitars work. In my opinion... A guitar should be good for everybody. If it's good enough for a beginner, it should be good enough for you. It, there shouldn't be a difference there. But we talked about that last night for a minute too, Jake. Yeah. And, and um, so the ST1 guitar, it, you, believe it or not, if you want to plop down the 140 bucks for the show ticket and then walk over to the orchestra pit for uh, Back to the Future and playing on Broadway, or the play Wicked, the Broadway show Wicked, the ST1 is played by not just the head chair, but by all the chairs. Yeah. Right? There's four shows a day. Yeah. That guitar is played on Broadway, bro. Yeah. And I <laughs> and, think that says a lot. And these musicians come in because they're professional sheet reading musicians and, and they read and, and they play. They have to play the same guitar. And for a tease guitar, 
the ones that every once in a blue moon you'll find online for $109, free shipping, gig bag, everything included, is playing on Broadway. That's got to that's got to tell you something, man. It's oh, it def it definitely does. I mean, and I that said I this before in this stream. You, I got the SBH from you. That's the Telecaster looking one. Mm -hmm. Uh, for copyright and safety purposes, I'm just going to call it the TL style guitar. Mm -hmm. The TL style guitar that I got from you had hot rails in the bridge. I my intention was so that was a pre-production model. Like that wasn't a hundred percent ready to go yet when I got it. It came to me. I opened it up and I made a couple of very minor tweaks and I gigged it for three hours the next night. <laughs> and so you know, I think there's a lot to be said about that. That's the only reason that I'm talking to you. That's the only reason that you're on the show right now. Um, there's no financial incentive for me to be doing this. I'm doing this because I do believe that the budget industry is collapsing, and I think it's because of players like you. You're knocking it down and bringing it up a different kind of way. And I think that what'd you what'd you, what'd you find under the hood of that SBH? What did you find under there? I found full size pots under there. I found did orange. They say CTS on them. Yeah, sure did. Exactly. Orange drop. Yeah. Cap. Gavit, Gavit wiring. Right? It had a really nice switch too. Yeah. So it wasn't That's just it. like, oh, this is a this is a guy who's trying to just buy me and buy my loyalty, and he's trying to just send me all this stuff. No, the conversation was, hey, I've got this new model. It's not ready yet. It has a ton of issues. I'm gonna send you one. Tell me what you think <laughs> and how we can make it better. So it wasn't. I'm gonna send you the cream of the crop, the very best example of my brand, and I'm gonna send it to you to buy you off so that you tell people good things about it. I actually reviewed that one and I gave it positive review. It's actually better now than it was. There were a couple things like the adjustment screws for the saddles were a little bit too long. You resolved that. There were just a couple of other minor things that you've resolved them all. And I think that's that's the reason, again, why the relationship has continued. And for all the viewers who are watching, this is not again, this is not a plug for a brand. This is not a commercial. This is very relevant to the world that we're living in right now. You go to Guitar Center and you look at the guitars for sale there, and this is what I do. I'll look at the guitars for sale there. What is the budget? Like, let's say I've got a, a couple hundred bucks, right? And I want to buy a guitar today. I go in there. It's not going to be a new guitar. It's just not. Because there's no new guitar in that price range that would fit any standards. Beginner or expert. Doesn't matter. There's hardly, there's one that you can buy in the store brand new right now. It's the Beretta Special. Um, I will not stop recommending it. That's a fantastic guitar. Other than that, though, I can't name one that I would recommend. So then what do you do? You go to the used room. And you go to the used room, you might find something in there in that price range that will do it for you. Maybe you'll find like an older Dean or maybe you'll find a, an older Squire or something like that. But, you know, then what do you do? You go home and you go online and you try to find one that, that's in your budget that will do what you want it to do that, that has good customer service. We live in a world now where that matters a whole lot more than ever because things are so accessible. If you're going to ask somebody to buy a guitar sight unseen and without touching it and without playing it first, you got to have the support to back it up. You have that, and a lot of the others don't. I'm going to be curious to see what is going to happen and what is this market going to look like as this continues over the next few years. Firefly is now making uh, artist signatures. They're making, they made like a Kramer 5150 looking guitar. It looks exactly like Ed's. I don't know how they didn't get sued. They have a Wolfgang. I don't know how they didn't get sued. They've got, um, I forget the guy, oh, Billy Joe Armstrong, there's Billy Joe Armstrong model. They have all these different artist models. There's a Zach Wilde one, and they sell out instantly. So is that it? Is, is that is that the peak? You're going to copy yeah, yeah. everybody else's stuff until you get sued out of existence and closed down? That doesn't seem like a winning strategy to me. It's going to be the guys who can make the most cost-effective and affordable instruments with the best customer service uh, and the best reliability. I've had these guitars, some of them, for you know several months now. Haven't, they haven't let me down yet, really. I think you're going to find that um, as this 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 world we live in shifts is it has shifted to uh, and it, with the boost of COVID to everything is being bought online. You're going to see most of these music. Sam Ash is a perfect example. They're 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 closing down stores every day, man. Um, oh, you, yeah. know, you, you go into a guitar center and guitar center's got guitars on the walls. They just don't have knowledgeable people to show them. No, to they you, don't. But, don't get me and, started on and, that one. Man. I, I'm not, but I, but I, I, <laughs> listen, I'm a long time, I'm a long time guitar center player, man. I, I, I've yeah. been going to guitar center for decades and, and I still go there and, and I get frustrated that I have to actually chase down a salesperson, but no. it, it is what it is. So, but so, so the companies that are going to make it 
are not the ones that are going to be the cheapest. I, I promise you. Yeah. People are going to get tired of sending products back. Yes, they They're are. They're going to get tired of doing it. I was reading it's a, in a post today. I, I, one guy said he bought two horrible guitars from two different manufacturers. He wanted to do a comparison. And he said one of them, I, it, I had to do it three times. I had to send three guitars back. But when I got the fourth one, it's so much better than the first one. And all I had to do to both of them, right? And I'm there. Just, you go I'm, again with your all I had to do. Yeah, I'm just scratching my head, going, "Bro, man, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, just the one thing that I can tell you is that if you buy one of one of my, and I'm not the only company. No. Do your due diligence and find there's there's really good companies out there that are just like mine. They really care. Yeah. Um, they they do have customer service, but as the world continues to change, so will online buying. And it will. The return button is not going to be how you're classed in customer service. Unfortunately, um, in today's world, as long as you have a return button, you've got great customer service. Well, <laughs> that's all it that's, takes is the person. Uh, yeah. Can I understand the person I'm talking to and yeah, but, can they give me what I want? Right. Which is usually and a if, return. <laughs> and, if, and, and if you have and who's got time anymore. Right. But if you if you can. I don't have three days to wait for somebody to email me back on anything. I no. I just don't. You know? Nobody does. But if you get an email back in three days, I, I hear posts. They emailed me back right away. It was three days. I'm like, like three days. I might not be sucking air anymore. You know no. what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, you know, there's customers, there's companies out there like mine that if you if you sent me an email at two o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't answer you. But I get up at six o'clock every day, and you'd have yeah. you'd have an answer by six ten. If you catch me at eleven o'clock at night, we might be on the phone till five o'clock in the morning, just shooting the shit about things if we got some stuff in common, you know. We're, oh yeah. Our companies, it's relationable. It's not transactional. Right. And and the internet will become relationable with certain companies, and those will be the companies that. I will choose to do business with. I don't know whether you will be or yeah. not, but um, to where you're not giving up anything, uh, you're getting everything that you would get by walking into a big market or a big block store. Um, you can get that same customer service from some companies, and uh, yeah. and I'm proud to say we're one of those companies. You know, yeah, one I would of, agree. One of many. So I would agree. I think that that's a change, and and I think that that's what's going to drop out most of the the budget guitars because I'm going to tell you right now. That if you're a crappy company that made crappy guitars and you had crappy customer service, trying to hope that people are going to buy your five, six, seven hundred dollar guitars is not going to save your company. It's it's going to it's going to drain it even worse. No, okay? you're right. So that's that's why I think that it's collapsing, because I see that model starting to go with everybody. Everybody's following that train. Everybody's everybody's putting stainless steel frets on their guitars. Yes, right? they are. Yes, they that's are. gonna come back. Mark my word. That's gonna come back to people that that after they get their toolkit. <laughs> yep. They're they're gonna say, man, I wish this thing didn't have stainless steel frets on it. You know it, and I know it. Yeah. One but of the, the guitar... things I want to throw out there, I'm gonna throw you a curveball because this is something that I've thought about, and one of the comments that was made a minute ago speaks to this a little bit. Prowling the used section can be quite the fun hunt for some dark horse guitars when the new stuff isn't cutting it. Now, that made me think of something that is is coming, okay? And guitar players everywhere will rejoice. You might not, though, because it's, it's bad for your company. I believe that we have a guitar re used guitar apocalypse coming, where people that either bought them during COVID and gave them up, or and I hate to say this, a lot of the older players, they're the ones who are buying the Gibsons and the Fenders for the most part. You're not seeing a lot of 20-somethings buying Gibsons new. Rarely. It's usually going to be the older people. Well, those people are going to start selling their guitars as they get older, or something's going to happen to them, and those guitars are going to be posted on the market. So what I'm trying to say is we're coming up to a point, a singularity, at which all of these high-end guitars, you know, high mid to high-end guitars are going to flood the market, flood the market, flood the market, and all of a sudden the price, uh, you can get a Les Paul Standard now used for like 1200 bucks. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely bonkers to me. 
and it's just going to continue to go down. You can get it. I see studios for less than six hundred dollars all the time, Gibsons. And so, how is that going to affect you? And how are you going to stay alive if that happens? This is also happening with Mexican fenders, by the way. You can get them for about three hundred to four hundred dollars. So two things: one, how does a company like you and all the rest of you, because there, there's a lot of companies like you, how do you guys survive that? And how do you prove, how would you convince somebody that they need to buy your guitar new instead of one of these other guitars used? What are they getting from you and your guitar that they're not getting from those? And how, what's your strategy to survive if that apocalypse does come? Uh, one of the, first of all, uh, the, the, for old people like myself, I won't buy anything used that's high dollar anymore because there's too, too many fakes out there. That and, is and, true. And I'm going to tell you, there's a, there's a large train behind me of baby boomers that we just don't do it, bro. Yeah. We just, because we don't know. <laughs> we can't even barely send an email without <laughs> doing some stuff, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, setting this thing up just for us to do this, that's a challenge, you know. It's we got challenge. it done. We got it done and we, we went live on time. So we like we we like nice stuff, and so we're willing to pay for nice stuff, but we're not stupid, right? And so um, when I look at that that ST2 guitar that you picked up, and and I look at a and I look at a five hundred dollar guitar, or I look at a made in Mexico Strat to to give you an idea of that, you know, eight hundred dollar guitar. I've got one hanging on my wall. Um, I've, I've got an American one too that I've way overpaid for. But if if you go side by side with those. Um, my guitar is better, bro. Right? It's better. And when people talk about resale value, what's the resale value on a hundred sixty-five dollar guitar? Who, do you, who cares? Well, if but no, get, even even to that know. point, if that was yeah. someone's argument, they would lose. Yeah. Here's why: you yeah. buy a Mexican Fender brand new right now, it's going to cost you almost a thousand bucks, right? Yep. Yeah. What are you going to sell that used for? Four hundred. Four to five hundred bucks. So you've lost I, I almost. I just sold it two months ago. Yeah. So if I sold this guitar right now on Facebook Marketplace locally, I guarantee you I could get 150 bucks for this guitar. All day. And so that's like a 10 percent loss if if I consider what it would have cost new. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's that defeats that argument. So. Mm -hmm. It, it, that's all it is. It's just I, I have to make something that's as good as. And if I I wish, I wish that uh, I could afford to send guitars out to people just to uh, just to put them in their hands. Yeah. So I can't do that. So what do I do every once in a while? Like I said, you know, we have blowout sales for 99 bucks. I'm going to tell you something, man, that little 12 inch radius neck right there. That's a quick little neck, man. You're going to have a hard time keeping up with it unless you're a professional. Then you can. But if you're not if you're not a professional musician, man, that's that's actually a shredding guitar for a hundred dollars. That's got nice frets on it. That's set up properly. That's got good factory strings on it. There's no grid mm -hmm. on the frets or anything like that. The pickups on my if you take a minute to scrape the wax off the bottom of the ceramic pickups. Who does that? We do that. You know. Yeah. Oh, one one thing that that needs to be said is that this is a full thickness body. Yeah. That's so you want to you know, you want to if you want to put some Seymour I, the ST one that we have on Broadway has Seymour Duncan's in it. I'm not afraid to say that, okay? Because it's a Broadway show and they only allow, believe it or not, it has to go through a process of being approved to play on these shows, and so it has to have certain things in it. Yeah. And so that guitar has that in it. Yeah. You couldn't take you couldn't you couldn't uh, you couldn't put some of the components in a in a Fender Squire that you can put in my guitar because they're thin. It it's mine's a full thickness body. Yeah, you know, it's got and that's the that's more notable than a lot of people realize. A lot of oh, right. by the way, Southern Cross Vid says good night, Jake Peace. and Torsten. Great show, enjoyed it. It's late for me. See you yeah, later. Thank, thank you. you for watching. Um, but it's notable because there is a cult following of mm -hmm. certain models of Squire Strats. I'm sure you're aware mm -hmm. of this. There's a certain model of it that's called the SE, the Squire mm -hmm. SE. It came in a Strat pack. It has Squire stamped tuners. But the reason everybody wants it, that and the Starcaster by Fender Strat style guitar, which I have one of those. Mm -hmm. Did a video right. on it. They want them because they have full thickness bodies. It it was for the longest time the cheapest way to get a full thickness uh, Strat style body. Right. And then they, the idea was just keep it as it is or put a different neck on it. Um, and, and so the price of those is about 199 bucks now. Uh -huh. 199 so, to 250 used. Uh, so I've got, <laughs> see, because I love when you when you bring things like this up, because you know what I'm going to do. 
I already did it, right? All of my ST1 guitars now, from next month, when this next shipment comes in, are going to be swimming pool routed. There's just a big old hole in That's there. That's amazing. Right? For modders, <laughs> there's no better guitar for modders, really. I, I took a wood router and routed out a body of mine to do that. Yeah. So now but if you want to... they're just going to come like that. They're going to come with yeah. three single coils in them, but you want to go HHH, you want to go ACSH, you want right to go HSS, you, whatever you want to do to it, bro. That's and it. And you want to put, you know what? You want to put 500 pots in there and 47 caps in there. Do it. You got room, bro. You got room, right? But I did that, right? I, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think about things. I draw, I'm, I'm, I'm so involved in these Facebook groups, and, and there's, there's, I'm going to say 90% of the people who spend time in those, that's what they do. They buy guitars like mine, and they make them, excuse my, they just make them badass. Yeah. Right? They make it, they own it. It's like this, this one's mine. There isn't another one. You yeah. Know? So uh, I, I foresaw that. So you're going to have stainless steel frets. You're going to have a bow nut. You're going to have a swimming pool body. And you're going to actually have, um, you're you're going to have, the pickups that are in there are awesome. Yeah. Okay? So it's good the way it is. But but if you want to mess with it, man, I, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I I actually, I beg people to send me the things that they've done to their guitars and they've done them. I'm going to tell you, some of those things, I, I steal from them and I put them in my guitars. Put them in production. I got a a pit guard to put in one of these actually. I'm going to do a video about it. Uh it's an HHH pit guard and it's really weird. It's got like a kill switch on it. It's got three phase switching or coil splitting switches on it. Um so I'm going to install that in one of those guitars because it's just I like the idea of having a guitar that's modular like that. Yeah. I I this one here. And so right? That's the one. Yeah, that's, it that's looks like that. Yeah. So uh, we're we're always working. We're always thinking ahead. What's coming next? So when you say what's going to keep you in business and how are you going to survive that, it's because I've got one job to do, and it, it's it's uh, it's to sell guitars. Yeah. That's my job is to sell guitar. A pretty good little salesman. But how am I going to do that? How am I got? Because I'm constantly saying. How can we do this better? I'm asking you. I'm asking Andy. I'm asking. I'm asking uh, Barker. You know. I, oh, I, and he I, watches. I ask... He watches these comments. I did videos on his guitars, right? On the T's guitars. If you comment and say stuff in there, he looks at those. So, oh, you know, everything. tell me, and I'll tell him. I mean, if there's something you're like, man, I really wish somebody would, whatever it is, he's listening. You know. Um, I see a comment here that says. Yeah. My old monetarily worthless Yamaha Pacifica came with a swimming pool routing, and people choose Squires over it. Don't know why they choose Squires over it. I think Yamahas are incredibly underrated guitars, for sure. And swimming pool routes are just a godsend. There's nothing like pulling a pit guard off and seeing that. Some people don't like it. They think it takes tone away or something. I don't think it takes any tone away. Uh, if you hey, listen, I, I, I don't know. If you're, if you, some people. Some people have they have an ear that that I don't have, and you probably don't have either. They hear everything that they hear, and that's just. But you can't build a line of guitars around one percent of the people, you, you, or one tenth of one percent of the people. Well, yeah. You just can't do it. Not so, to mention that that thing that they hear, you can add yourself on your amp by going up to your knob and going. Well. I think you said the same thing too. It doesn't matter what kind. I run orange amps, and I also run a Marshall amp, and uh, and my guitars sound great in those amps. Yeah. Um, if 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 you're running a you know a, I don't know an old PB amp from from 1984, that that guitar may not sound too good. But I'm gonna tell you something. It's not the guitar. Unless unless it's a bandit. <laughs> if it's a bandit, then it'll sound awesome. But you know what I mean. So yeah. Your equipment is your equipment You're right. is just as good as your guitar. But these orange amps that I run now, I'm and I'm a Marshall guy. But these orange amps that I run, I'm, I'm old now, man. I play blues and jazz. You know, I don't. Oranges are great. That's one they I've are. never yeah. owned. I just got yeah. a new Marshall. It's back. You can't really see. There it is. There it is. Yeah. That's an Origin 50, all valve, and it. I've never experienced that for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, a Marshall, all valve natural breakup and distortion i'd never experienced that before and it was like a holy experience and also i learned a lot of the guitars i really liked are actually not very good <laughs> because you when you get a good enough amp then you really hear what your guitars really sound like and some i didn't think were very good are actually very good this is one of them i didn't think it didn't sound good but it sounded so much better like with the tubes in that marshall turned up really loud with this with the alnico yeah. single coils 
it changed the way it sounded for me. So, you know, uh, that goes into a whole nother discussion. But if, if, if you guys are sitting there and you're like, do I get a new guitar or a new amp? Get a new amp. Get a really good amp. <laughs> get a really good amp, and then you never have to worry about it again. And then you can buy all of Torsten's guitars, and you can buy whatever you want. And, and yeah. it changes everything for you. It changes how you feel. It changes how you play. You feel that responsiveness. It doesn't have to be tube either. It could be something like this. This is the Positive Grid Spark. This is a, a modeling amp. It's got two tiny speakers in it. This is the best practice amp I have ever used in my life. This thing blows my mind every time I turn it on. I think you can, you can see this amp here, right? This is a... Uh, yeah. This is my... this. Well, first of all, this runs... There's 10 9-volt rechargeable batteries in the back of that guitar. So I get to take that to the beach, to yeah. the park... Yeah. Sits in the back of my, and I play an electric guitar wherever I go, man. You know? Yeah, and 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 it's got a great sound on it. It's yeah, got an so absolute wonderful sound. But find just, a find a good amp, yeah. and you're all set. I mean, that's kind of off topic, but it is something that I think is worth noting. Is a lot of these people that are complaining about guitars that aren't very nice. There's two major things that I think we need to discuss before we end it tonight. There's two major things about guitars that that bother me that I think you'll have something to say about. Number one. People complain that the guitar sounds terrible or whatever, but they're playing it through a bad amp. We've covered that. Get yourself a good amp, and then you'll know what a good guitar can sound like. And if you don't have a good amp, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Work toward it if you can, and if you can't, enjoy what you got. I gotta say, enjoy what you got. But mm -hmm. if you're in the in the position to get one or the other, keep the old cheaper guitar and just get the amp, and then get the guitar next time. The other thing is. Um, and th this is a this is a personal uh, thing for you. People complain and they immediately judge a guitar and say it's bad because of sharp fret ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's let's crazy. Let's talk yeah. about sharp fret ends. So, yeah. what causes it, and should people judge a guitar based on its fret ends? Well, um, first of all, it, it, there isn't a guitar maker out there. Jake, you've been playing guitar for I don't know how many years. I can tell you, I, I played guitar. Uh, 1974, I picked up my first guitar, and I, I've never, ever had a guitar that had an unfinished maple neck that didn't have sharp frets in the winter. <laughs> yep. My Kramer Beretta, it's an 85, an 85 mm -hmm. Beretta that's supposed to be a holy grail guitar. Mm -hmm. Every winter, it sprouts, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't file I, it because in the summertime, it swells back up again, and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got a Schecter guitar. I've got Fender guitars. I've got Squires. I've got I, – I, you name it, I've got it, and uh, – don't want to say the word, but I've, I've got an issue. I've got a problem with guitars, man. Um, yeah, but anyway, I know. I know. It, so I, I found a tool to, to finalize, though. I showed you that tool, and it's a 45-degree uh, file block, which will clean up all your guitars. But if you're judging a guitar because it's, it's got sharp frets, um, wood shrinks and swells, metal doesn't. So if the wood shrinks because it's cold, just think of your – if you're a man, think of jumping in the swimming pool. Your shit's going to shrink up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same deal, man. You know, so if it's cold, it's going to shrink. And that's – where do the frets go? Well, they stay where they're at, and so it's going to have sharp frets. But the good thing is that you can go down to your local CBS. Like in our guitars, we actually we actually give you a sanding sponge with yeah. every guitar just in case, right? It, it, most of them, we sand them the day we send them. And believe it or not, I the use day this. you get it. Yeah, the day you get it, if, if if you're if you're again in Wisconsin or we ship to Canada too, you know. Yeah. Um, so if you're if you're if you're in one of those really cold, or I'm in New York, it, it, it's cold, man, and and it's going to shrink, and, and you're going to have sharp frets. So uh, the sharp frets have have nothing to do with the guitar. They have no. absolutely nothing to do. What it, the, one other point I just wanted to make real quick, and before we get off of here, is yeah. that um, buy the guitar for what you kind of music you play, right? So yeah. we've got an we've got an ST1 guitar which is really nice for for a beginner intermediate guitar player and um, it's very nice for an intermediate guitar player and and you can gig that guitar it gigs all the time the ST2 that's the old man that's the I'm I'm a try I think I'm gonna make it in a boomer blue right <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea you need to make one and, and make it you should you should actually make it the boomer edition and then I, say I the color is about, boomer yeah, blue exactly I would buy one of those I'm not a boomer I, I'd buy one of those. <laughs> This is the but, ST2. I'm showing yeah, it. But, I'm showing it to the people. But that guitar right there, right that's a, that's a, that's a uh, that's a 70s, 80s classic Southern rock guitar. But it's also a beautiful blues and jazz guitar, right? Yeah. If you play heavy metal music and you don't want to spend the $350 on my SS1, buy a West Creek guitar. They're great. 
right? A couple hundred bucks, man. You're not going to go wrong with that deal. That That's thing, a heavy yeah. metal guitar. It's got great humbuckers in it, you know, or or get you something with some active EMGs if that's your deal, you know. You can find those all over the place, too, for a couple hundred bucks. Oh, and, yeah. And, and um, you know, but get the guitar for what you like to play. You know, if you buy a guitar with uh with single coil pickups in it and, and you want to play some you, you know you want to play some some motorhead is probably not going to come out right for especially if you're paying through a, a fender champ amp for 100 oh bucks, man right? or a twin so, a twin with yeah. no no second channel or something and a behringer 29 dollar <laughs> distortion bar, you know it, it, but this is and, and then it's it, then it's it's not just the sharp frets it's ah, this guitar sucks it doesn't do this doesn't right do that. right it's it's, it's you, you've got to buy the right guitar for whatever it is that you like to play. I like to play all of it, bro. Yeah. All of it. If you want to pick a, a country picker, uh, we sell a telly. We sell two tellies, man. It, I'm going to tell you something. One of them is a heavy metal telly. <laughs> that one can, it can in fact do heavy metal. Yeah. I actually recorded an Iron Maiden cover with it. I haven't released yeah. it yet, but. So, but, you know, but we've got that Nashville picker, the little SV edition. It's got the Alnicas in it. Yeah. And uh, so just pick the guitar. Don't worry about sharp frets. I've got a video up on our website. It's uh, www.teesguitars.com. You can uh, you can go down to the specifications and setups and scroll down, and there's several. How to set up a guitar, how to fix sharp frets, things like why sharp frets are doing this, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and, and just stuff like that. It's It, it doesn't cost you anything. And I, I welcome you guys to join our family. And, and, and my customers, they'll tell you, man, you, you go on, on, on YouTube and you look up T's Guitars, you'll see some of the comments is like, yeah, man, I, I was talking to a customer the other day for about two, three hours. We're just shooting the shit, you know, um, that, because that's what we do. You know, we're, I'm old, man. I ain't got much to do. My wife's hot, but she works. So, you know, <laughs> she, she puts up with all the guitars hanging all over the room, sometimes in the bathroom, you know, it just says so she's a good girl. I think I'll keep her. But yeah, I, like I said, man, you know, it, it, these things are, are um, it's fun for me and I want to make it fun for you. And, and I yeah. want you to have a good experience. You can have a good experience, not just with my company. Again, there's a lot of different companies out there. They offer good products. They offer good customer service. And I would just I would say that, you know, for for these companies that are out there that have always had bad service. Have always had subpar guitars that don't email you back, that don't pick up the phone. Right. Don't buy or just just don't buy from them. No, just don't buy from them. It, it, it doesn't make sense for you. And if you want to buy a guitar, if, if you like doing mods and, and fixing your guitars that you just spent 200 bucks on, knock yourself out, man. I got better stuff to do. I like to golf. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And, and that's the deal with it, you know. But um, I appreciate you having me on, man. This was it was a lot of fun, and, and more than happy to come back anytime you, you'd like to have me. Yeah, of course. Um, and again, you can go to teasguitars.com. You can use the code uh, Jake ten off. That's Jake one zero off. You get ten dollars off anything in the store. Everything we've talked about is going to be there. Um, and you can follow the website. He posts updates on there fairly often. Um, before we officially close this uh i want to take a couple minutes here and just open the chat up for questions if anybody has anything they want to ask either of us or anything that you want to touch on related to this topic or others here uh i'll give you guys a couple minutes if there's anything that you wanted to discuss while we wait for that i'm going to read through some of these here yeah a good amp is definitely better than a good guitar i would agree with that the tone does come from the speaker it is multiple multiple steps you got to have the good amp, and then you got to have the good speaker. You can put a bad speaker in a good amp, terrible. You can take a good guitar, put it in a bad amp, terrible. You can take a bad guitar, put it in a good amp, and you'll be all right. You take a good guitar with a good amp, though, and there, now you're talking. All right. 19% humidity. I like that. That's 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 that you even know that is shocking, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just like, I, feel, I go like this, I feel them, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's cold, man. <laughs> Good amp, bad speaker, all the beginner amps. Yes, including the one that Torsten talked about a minute ago, the, the 80s PVs. Yeah. I took a – I've got like one of those old PV Rages. Like they're terrible amps. People say they are. Uh, I just did a speaker out mod and put it in a 4x12. It sounds amazing. So yeah. bad speakers. Bad speakers. They did, they cheaped out in the on the speaker. So there's a tip for all of you. If you can't afford a really nice amp, go get an old PV or something and then – upgrade the speaker uh, you, tell you what you get a used stack like i got back there i paid 650 bucks for that whole setup right there and i gotta tell you and that's got celestian it, it, they're they're nice cream speakers in there man oh yeah they're, and and i've got eight of them right? yeah 
yeah. 650 head, everything, great effects on it. You can get these old Marshall amps. They're not, they're solid state. I, look, I'm not playing at the arena tonight, so this is good. <laughs> you know. <laughs> they're not terribly expensive anymore. You can get the MG100 yeah. head for about 200 bucks now. Yeah. And you can get the and cab the, for around one to 200. In fact, I have the yeah. exact same cab as you. Whoop, that yeah. cab right there is the exact same cab that you have. It's the MG412. Yeah. 200-ish bucks for the cab, 200-ish bucks for the amp, and then you've got yourself a half stack for 400 or full stack for about the same you paid, 600. Yeah, 650, that's what I got, man. So, and there, there's a ton of them out there because, it, yeah. yeah, it's – so, I, man, I don't know, man. I, I think online is – every, everything's going online, including guitars, and, and it's unfortunate that, that – well, if you go to Guitar Center, you can play any guitar you want. You can sit down there all day, and they probably won't notice you. That's a good thing about that story. Then right? you go order it from Sweetwater <laughs> when you leave. There you go. All right. Well, all right, thank you very much for being here and, and talking with everybody. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you who are watching. You know, Thank you so much. Um, a quick announcement on the channel. Uh, this weekend's video, Saturday, is going to be a music video. It's going to be from one of my favorite musicals, actually, uh, because it's Easter Sunday. So it's from Jesus Christ Superstar. I did a, a song from that musical. So weird. I've never done anything like that on this channel before, but it is rock. I made it a rock song. So hope you guys like it. Uh, that's going to be coming out Saturday morning. And then we'll be back to reg regularly scheduled uh, tech videos and stuff in the ensuing weeks. Um, this won't be the last you hear of T's Guitars and the last you hear of Torsten. He'll be on the channel again. We'll do another interview and another Q&A. If you guys liked it, let us know. Join the Discord. The link is in the description. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. See you next time, and keep on rocking. Thanks, Torsten. All right.